there's a new member of the Life's a Whirlwind family. Drink too much Beverly, this is what it does to you. everyone and welcome back to life's a whirlwind so many of you have been waiting patiently awaiting and some of you not so patiently i'm sorry guys it's taking this long <laughs> to get um baby diva's birth story up there for all of you that follow on instagram you know that she has arrived i did do some instagram stories um updating everyone so I am going to show you guys that don't have Instagram, I'm going to put on here, those stories that I had put up. And it just kind of let everybody know the progression of the labor. So let me give you a little bit of backstory. So Langley developed gestational diabetes while pregnant. And oh, by the way, she's not telling this story because she's completely exhausted. <laughs> So I get to tell the story um, to get it up there because I know everybody wants to see what Baby Diva looks like because we've not posted a picture of Baby Diva yet because we wanted you guys on YouTube to see her before everybody on Instagram. So back to Langley and the gestational diabetes. So because of that, they normally don't let mothers um, go to, with gestational diabetes, normally go to their due date. So Langley's due date was, well, baby Diva's due date was uh, October 2nd. So um, they had planned that, um, so at 7.45 on September 26th, a Sunday, uh, they were scheduled to go into the hospital at 8 p.m. And so they get to the hospital so that they can put in the balloon. Now, I'm going to show you guys what a balloon is and explain a little bit. You may, I don't know, some of y'all might go, okay, too much information. We didn't need to see that. So right now, look away. Okay, so that was the balloon that was actually in Langley. Um, some call it like a bulb. A some, it's called something bulb or something balloon. You know, several, you know, things like that have several like little names. But they insert that and then they put saline in it and they expand it. And the, like the, the biggest bulb actually like touched baby diva's head it would like rest up on her head and the point of that is like to soften the cervix now langley when they insulted inserted that balloon she was at uh two centimeters dilated and 60 percent effaced so that's what she was when she got to the hospital and um so then as you dilate more the nurse will come in and inject more saline and it just expands the balloon let me backtrack a little bit. Um, when Langley did get there, they were going, they tested the whole time she was there. Every two hours, they tested her blood, her sugar levels, because labor can mess up um, like sugar levels with gestational diabetes. And one of the times that her finger was pricked, I think it was the first time her finger was pricked, when the nurse pricked it, like Langley said she doesn't know quite what happened, but blood actually shot up and hit the nurse in the forehead. <laughs> Can you imagine? When you get at the hospital, one of the first things they do after, you know, they get all your vitals and all that, it's time to get the IV. Langley's not very good with needles, but, um, and she'd only had an IV one other time other than when she was an infant. Uh, and that's when she got her wisdom teeth out. And you guys that have been with us for a long time know that that was a funny video. Um, I did vlog that. I will link that at the end. Langley, because of, you know, the narcotics she had for her wisdom teeth, she came out of there talking about a shark bite. She'd been bit by a shark. It was a shark bite. And what it was, was the IV. <laughs> so, unfortunately, she's kind of like me. And IVs just don't like to go in. Her veins just aren't nice. 
and they tried it in her arm first and that didn't work so she ended up having to have it in her hand but at least it worked the second time with the balloon um langley says it you know it didn't hurt when they put it in it was just kind of uncomfortable and but every time baby diva moved and I guess somehow rubbed up against that balloon and kind of moved it that it was uncomfortable. They also inserted some type of pill that would basically kind of have her start like just little contractions, like little baby contractions. I have no idea what the pill was. I don't even think Langley knows what the, the, the pill was. The balloon went in at about 9.30. At about 12.15, the pain, she she was really starting to feel the pain of the contractions. Now granted, the reason they put this this balloon in and that she went in was to soften the cervix, cervix and get everything started for Monday morning because Monday morning they were gonna start Pitocin to start induction. But she was starting to have like regular contractions after midnight and they actually gave her some uh, Phenidol, Fena, Fena something. Anyway, and by, I'm going to say it was like by three, I think, that had already, worn, it might have been two, that had already worn off. Like, that didn't last long at all. Around four in the morning, they took out her balloon, and because she was dilated to, sir, I can't remember what the amount is. It wasn't 10 or eight. It might have been maybe around seven or something. And they took the balloon out. And then at around 4.30, her water broke. So that was unexpected and unplanned. So at this point, you know, she is in labor. Like they're not going to have to induce Monday morning because yeah, she's in labor. And around seven o'clock in the morning, she had had enough and they went to do the epidural and there was an issue there with the epidural. Um, Langley's heart um, blood pressure spiked, which put baby Diva in distress. And for a split second, they're like, okay, we got to get this down or we're going to end up having to do a C-section. So she ended up getting two different type of shots or I'm not going to say type, but two shots. I think she said one in her leg and one in her arm. Um, to help lower the blood pressure and thank goodness it worked so her blood pressure came down and then baby diva you know came out of distress so everything's going good at that point and during this time you know I can't the only person at the hospital with her is Colby because nobody else is allowed in there because stupid virus but uh, Colby had stopped he sent me the, a text at 9 30, around 9.30 in the morning, and he's like, she is fully dilated, plus one, it's about to happen. And that is the last I hear of him, from him, 9.30. And of course, I'm relaying this to everybody else, so that, you know, Langley and Colby are only, like, communicating with me, so I can tell everybody else so they don't have to worry about all the other communication. because it's like okay she would already have been pushing uh, what is going on we haven't heard from either one of them and then 11 o'clock hits and I'm like okay I am going to end up calling him just like maybe that you know maybe she's here and or something bad happened and they're just you know he's distracted but he needs to like I'm just gonna like let the phone ring to remind him hey we're here let us know something <laughs> like really um and oh my gosh Skylin who of course is study abroad in Merida um she was probably the worst she's like it shouldn't take this long to have a baby right um you don't push this long and uh, so she was just constantly messaging me had I heard anything so I was giving it to um, 11 15 and I'm like I'm calling him and at 11 06 I 
get this picture. And then I get a couple more pictures. Baby Diva has arrived. Colby said Langley did awesome. You know, she was pushing for about an hour and a half because by the time the doctor got in and they got all started and, you know, started having Langley pushing, it was about an hour and a half of active pushing. And he said she did great. She never took a break. You know, she would do her push and then she'd, you know, take a few breaths and she'd start the pushing again. And, and you can really tell that she wasn't in like the pushing stages very long because Baby Diva does not have a cone head. And that's one of the first things when I got a message from Langley, you know, it took, it was a lot of messages from Colby at first, but then when Langley, you know, they're done with her and, and she's situated to the point where she can text me. Um, she's like, she's like, she doesn't have a cone head. <laughs> Um, so I know you are ready for some pictures and after some pictures, I'm going to insert some, um, the first time that I actually got to FaceTime with Langley. Tell me about it. I don't know what to say. Oh, he's holding her. Yeah, she likes him a lot. <laughs> and she's been nursing okay? I've only done it like twice. Oh. She has like another hour before she has to. But they have to prick her finger or her prick her foot before. Before she nurses so they can check the sugar and then after? I don't not after, right? No, not after. She has blue eyes. She does have blue? See I don't have a picture with like her eyes open. She just fell asleep. Um what was I going to say? This is what my hair looks like, and I didn't know it. Well, that's okay. The nurse put it up yesterday. Was that this morning? The nurse put yeah. it up for you? Yeah, because we, it, it was like right when my blood pressure went like that. No, it was right before that. Yeah, she put it up. So you think you were just nervous so much, so much anxiety over the needle of the epidural that it shot up your blood pressure? It hurt so bad I didn't care at all. Oh. About the needle. I think it was just the medicine because then they gave me a shot in my leg. A shot. I didn't even care about the shot they gave me in my arm or my leg. And they gave me something in my IV. Mm. And Colby said you did really well pushing, that you just kept pushing. So was it what you thought it was going to be like? It was just faster than I thought, but it was faster than everybody thought. Yeah. So after the effort, I never got like the pitocin. I know that's what I'm shocked about. This is my third gown. Puked uh, on one. You puked on one. And Colby was about to puke because I was puking. Because Colby did what? I said Colby was about to puke. I was puking. Why'd you throw up? Why did I? Yeah, it was right after they gave me all those medicines. So did she cry right away when she came out? She cried for the first two hours straight. <laughs> Poor baby. She's like, this is traumatizing. Yeah, she's finally asleep. And I saw some tears in your eyes. And Colby already admitted he cried. Yeah. Oh. Well, as soon as she opens those eyes, grab a picture so I can see the blue. You can't really, it's like a deep blue. You can't really tell in a picture. So does she seem very, um, oh my good. I still can't get over the hair. Well, that didn't last. Oh. How did it feel when you held her for the first time? I thought she was going to be way, like, she seemed way tinier than that, the first one. Wow. Oh my gosh, that hair. I told Colby, I said, you were a cute baby, but it's actually cuter than you were right after being born. 
Here I have inserted some pictures of Langley when she was born. She's upset. She's sucking her thumb. Thanks. She's yeah, already she's sucking her thumb? Like her whole hand she's up. So I'm like collicited. Wow. So how they don't even care about my sugars anymore. I passed all the ones I needed to pass. And I can have whatever I want. Yay! So did you eat all your um, chicken nuggets? Yeah, where's my toy? <laughs> I was gonna tell you. <laughs> Neither one of you got a toy. That's a shame. Do you wanna see what you would have got in there? Oh she has to stick her tongue out. Oh, that's you. That is all you. Do you know how many pictures I have of you with your tongue out? Look at her. Yeah, she really doesn't have a coat head. No, and her coloring is so good. And she doesn't have like any weird strawberry things or, I mean, just her... She's like a little freckle on her hand. Do what? She's a tiny freckle on her hand. I, I didn't hear you. A tiny freckle. She where? has a tiny freckle on her hand, like on her wrist. Interesting. But it's tiny. Can you just like not stop looking at her? I just can't believe I got that out of me. I know. Oh, how's your belly? It's fine. It's fine. Like it, the epidural wore off. I didn't get it till seven centimeters. Because I went from four to seven so fast. Oh. Um. It's fine. And I. I mean, ibuprofen a minute ago to help with it. I know I have more questions, but I, I don't. I slept um thirty something hours. So. You haven't slept. So you didn't get even a 15 minute nap? No, because I didn't. The bowl was in from nine to four and it finally came out. Then Is this a different room now? They moved you up? They moved us up to the other floor. Did you but get- At four. Did you get to walk or they just put, push you in the bed? They pushed me in a wheelchair. Holding her or was Colby holding her? And then I didn't have a mask on. She was like, put this blanket over your face. <laughs> but you but didn't... We didn't have to wear a mask in the room. Okay, good. I was going to say, you didn't have to wear a mask during labor, did you? We didn't have to wear them at all in the room. Okay, good. Good, good. So what did the doctor say when she came out? She was like, just like, good job, good job. And they just immediately put her on your belly? For an hour. I mean your chest, not your belly. For an hour. Well, they waited like, what was it, like 10 minutes to cut her cord? One minute to cut her cord, then they cut it. Well, Colby cut it, and then we just choked. She screamed literally the whole entire time. No. The whole time. Like, right now she's sleeping, but. Is this the longest she's slept so far? Yeah, because like right when she went to sleep before, the nurse came in and gave her like a shot. And um, the nurse up here got mad that they put a band-aid on her. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, the nurse up here was not happy about it. Are you going to try to go to sleep now that she's asleep? Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. <laughs> And then later, Skyline got to FaceTime with Langley and Baby Diva from Merida.
quite that round. So have you found anything that she really, really likes? Colby. <laughs> what are you saying? She doesn't like you? Not as much as him. <laughs> Not as much as him. <laughs> are you a daddy's girl? Are you going to be a daddy's girl? Well, she's looking up at you, Langley. It's just because she can't see him. Because she can't see him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Look at those blue eyes. Colby, are you disappointed those eyes aren't brown? I wanted her to have blue eyes. Good. Oh, what? Do you just find yourself, like, staring at her? Yeah. Anything? Well, how about when she, um, when you change your diaper, does she get mad? Yes. Hmm. She, she what? Gets mad if she doesn't have clothes on. Yeah, most babies are like that. It's just because it's cold. Because they're cold. On Tuesday, they did find out that baby Diva had jaundice, so she did have to have light therapy. Baby Diva was born at 11.01 a.m. She weighed 7 pounds, 6.5 ounces, and was 20.1 inches long. This is her first set of headphones. No, it's actually her hearing test, which she passed with flying colors. And then she wasn't too happy about her first bath. As they were getting ready to leave the hospital room, Langley took this picture. I am absolutely obsessed with it. I feel like she's like, hi there, or either she's like, hey, no pictures, please, no pictures. Lakeland and I went over to Langley and Colby's house about 10-15 minutes before they arrived so that we would be there when they got there. Was she actually awake? I think so. Did she sleep? Oh my gosh, she looks so tiny in there. Did she sleep on the way? or? Yeah, yeah she's sleeping. She doesn't have pants on? <laughs> I don't think it matters. Oh, those eyes are opening. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's weird because in the pictures she looks so big, she's but so she's not. She's little. <laughs> Darling. Yeah, I know. God, it's been so long. It's been so long. Oh my god. Hi. Hello. Those eyes are open. Oh my gosh. It's amazing to think you kids were this little. That's crazy. Hello. So oh, I know. I know. It's so dramatic. I know, darling. I know. I know. Let's get to cover your legs. Let's cover your legs. Oh, I know. Let's move the hair. My goodness. Hello. You ready to hold her Lakeland in a minute? No, you never held one this little. Because mm -mm. a baby girl was bigger than this, a lot bigger than this when you held her. Yeah. Hello. I'm just tired. Yes, she is. Well, hello, darling. Oh, what? What do you see? Say, I'm Grand Diva. You'll learn to say it. What do you see? I know. There's so much up there. There's so much up there. No, don't go to sleep. I'm talking to you. And Lakeland wants to talk to you. And you're going to sleep. And did you just grin at me? I think you just grinned at me. Don't go to sleep. Wake up. <laughs> Hi. 
<laughs> She's looking at you. Talk to her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sound like she barked. <laughs> The next day, Thursday, uh, Colby and Langley brought baby Diva over to my parents' house after her first pediatrician appointment so they could see her. And baby Diva also got to meet Chelsea and Megan, my nieces. <laughs> to put a few more pictures dur during the outro music because there are some great ones. Go ahead and subscribe. Become part of the Life's a World Wind family because very soon we will be announcing her name and that will be here on YouTube before Instagram. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram if you have an Instagram account. Um, we are on Twitter, but I, I, I don't post very often on Twitter. I just kind of forget we have it, but we do have a Twitter account. Every once in a blue moon, you'll see something there. And of course, we're going to be having lots of baby vlogs now. And um, I'm really excited. This is our first uh, grandbaby and my parents' first great grandchild. So this is just a awesome new adventure that we're all going on and I am basically semi-retiring to be able to keep baby diva when Langley goes back to work. So I am super excited about that and as Tom always says, adventure awaits.